Hello again, friends. Today is 12-14-2021, and it's the vlog day 17 of the Odin Project. Today I worked on the box model, and I um, was finishing up on block and inline, and then I stopped uh, almost all the way through it. So we'll get through most of that, and so without uh, further ado, we'll go over the box model. So... Um, the box model is um, this goes over here. You're learning objectives, learning about the box model, and I won't belabor this too much. There's a lot in here. Actually, this isn't too bad, but there's a lot of great articles that are in the assignments and videos that go over um, the block model um, a lot. But excuse me, the box model a lot in more in depth. But this is essentially it. So you have a box, you know, and uh, here's your text, and here's your padding is the space in between the uh, text and the border, and then your border, uh, so that's your padding element. Your border element is defined as the thickness of the out outer box here, and then the margin is the defined as the uh, empty white space, if you will, pixels uh, in between the edge of the border and whatever else is next to it which in this case is nothing's here but if you had another uh, you know if you will element or, or box next to it that margin would define that and so um, so they go through a little project here a little task they say just to get you thinking about the box model and so they have you go into um, they have you go into the style editor here and they have you create a CSS so you can see and basically it's a little task to go ahead and put boxes around and it'll, sh it'll basically put boxes around every single element inside the Odin Project's main landing page so you do it by asterisk which means uh, select all or apply to all and we're gonna do border space colon space two pixels to px uh, solid red for the color and you see what it did is it it's just going it's just showing you um, what that looks like and how even in the auto project everything is based on box model basically everything's a box and it describes that in the text set you know even circles like your chat box even circles are inside of a box look at that even <laughs> even the animation is inside of a box which is inside of a box inside of a box nested boxes so um, yeah it doesn't look pretty but it's just showing you um, the nitty-gritty of how um, the box model works and that everything is based on the box model and that you need to understand how box model works in order to use CSS effectively and eventually JavaScript. It talks in the text about um, if you don't learn this basic stuff here and have a good understanding of how it works, when you get to JavaScript, <coughs> you'll be literally beating your head on the keyboard all day trying to figure out why something like, for instance, this logo shifting to the right when you're not telling it to, when in <coughs> when all actuality you have something defined incorrectly or a rule based rules getting overwritten in your um, CSS box and if you don't understand that you'll you'll never figure it out is essentially what it's saying so um, so that's that and that's going over that um, I won't read all this but in a nutshell that's kinda what it's going over I kinda wanna keep going tonight because I wanna get to the uh, text editor um, which I feel like is what you guys always love to see as well more so than reading these pages and then there's a knowledge check there and in the next uh, section where I round it off is block and inline for today and um, basically the difference is that um, inline elements do not start in on uh, inline elements however do not start on a new line they appear in line with whatever elements they're placed besides. So basically an inline is like your uh, 
your anchor tag here for like you know for this would be for you know uh, links or whatever uh, clear example there right there a clear example of an inline element is a link a tag if you stick one of these in the middle of the paragraph of the text it will behave like the paragraph like like this and it just that just knocks you out to a YouTube video which doesn't really matter they're using that as an example that the standard inline uh, the standard inline takes the display property of the rest of the text that's why it, it, it's clean it doesn't need anything extra so additionally padding and margin behave differently on inline elements in general you do not want to try to put extra padding or margin on inline elements uh, because by, quite frankly what they have by default works great um, why what CSS has by default works great um, and then the block is what we just looked at so de by default block elements will appear on the page stacked atop each other like new el each new element starting on a new line and that's essentially what this is um, most of these anyway like you know these are all um, blocks uh, and then I don't know if there's any inline on this or not. Mm. Not really seeing anything here. But um, I think you get the point. <clears throat> and then they have some assignments down here. Um, they're, they're long reads in this section as well. That's why I didn't... Uh, I'm, we're not going to get a lot of. Uh, we're going to go over one one of the practice examples here in our CSS repo exercises repo that we um, brought down a couple videos ago for the original CSS. There's one in there for margin and padding. One I got through this one and then I stopped for this one because, quite frankly, I had a really long day today at work and I'm kind of burned. So um, I started working on margin and padding too and I stopped because I just didn't have the brain juice tonight to do it. So. Um, we're going to go through the margin padding one exercise because it's pretty simple and it's quick. Um, so this should not be a very long video um, tonight. But uh, anyway, the assignments were to, to read all this and I did all that. And it defines more in depth the difference between inline and, in, and inline block. And I won't go over all that to, to bore you guys <clears throat> with those details. You can read them on the Odin project uh, on your own if you like. Um, so with that said, let's hit the code. Let's hit the text editor here, shall we? So I split these out. Um, so over here is your desired outcome. This is what it's supposed to look like, and here's the styling, the CSS. Um, <clears throat> so the README says, for this first exercise, simply edit the style CSS file so that the divs look like the image. Sorry, I gotta make this bigger. For this exercise, simply edit the style CSS file so that the divs look like the image below. Only edit the CSS where instructed in the file. You should only have to change the values of the margin and padding for this exercise. You should not have to add or remove properties in the CSS nor touch the HTML. Self-check. Use this section to check your work. On these projects, your goal isn't to attain 100% pixel perfection, which we're going to see that here in a minute but to use the tools you've learned to get relatively close to the desired output. And then here's your your tips. Div 1 and Div 3, Div 1 and Div 3, both have 32 pixels between their text and border. Div 1 has 12 pixels between it and any other element on the page. And then there is a 48 pixel gap between Div 2 and Div 3. Div 3 is aligned to the right, and Div 3 is alignment is achieved using margin not float flex, flex box etc so basically they want you to do the alignment using only a margin so uh, and we'll go over that uh, I already did it um, so we'll just go over what I did here so the first step is div 1 and div 3 have 32 pixels between their text and border so there's div 1 and there's div 3 has 32 pixels between their text and border so text and border so that there would be padding so I knew that so I already knew that from the text uh, so what we gotta do is we're gonna go over to style we're gonna go to div 1 and we're gonna add 32 pixels to the padding div 3 we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna add 32 pixels to the padding go to the second 
one here. Div 1 has 12 pixels between it and any other element on the page. So there's Div 1, <coughs> and it has 12 pixels between it and any other element on the page. So that should be um, that should be uh, margin. Yep, 12 pixels. Put that there. There is a 48 pixel gap between div 2 and div 3, so there that is margin as well, um, definition. So we're going to add 48 pixels of margin to uh, div 2. So there's 2, margin bottom. There you go, 48 pixels. Div 3 is aligned to the right. Div three is aligned to the right, so we're gonna go to div, we're gonna go to three, and we're gonna add margin left, and that says that because uh, margin left will be all the padding on this side in pixels. So the more pixels you put on here, put here, the farther that <coughs> excuse me, div three will shift to the right, if that makes sense. So um, yeah, so the less number here, like if you had like fifty, it Div three would probably be way over here because you're only going to use, uh, you know, 50 pixels on that left side margin. Um, so uh, we get we're not going to get it we're not going to get it perfect because just like in the text here, it says the goal is not to obtain 100% pixel perfection, but to use the tools to get close. So um, I farted around with it <laughs> a little bit and came up with 350, which gets it close. It's not exactly perfect as, like this, but it's pretty darn close. Um, and I did not look at the solution because um, I, quite frankly, didn't need to on this one. Plus, you'll see that it's not perfect, which means I have my own number in there. Um, so with that said, you can control S to save it if you haven't done so already. And head over here. Um, and we're going to go to margin padding and hit refresh. And there it is. I see I already did it, so it didn't do anything. But um, as you can see, everything looks pretty good. Div 3 shifted a little farther over than than uh, the desired outcome photo or image. But it's, it's pretty darn close. Like I said, and like I said, you're not looking for perfection. Just... Just getting uh, the elements down. So that added the margin there. Got the padding. And it even set, helps you um, with a little uh, comment here. Change me, change me, change me. They're just keeping you in line to make sure that you're not changing anything else in the document. Um, or in the C CSS that would uh, break something else. Um, which is nice. So it kept this one uh, short and sweet tonight. Kept this video um, um, short and kept the exercise simple should say because I'm kind of fried so um, I hope you guys uh, learned a lot tonight on this uh, short journey with me this evening through uh, box model and going through padding and margin and borders and um, I I hope you had a good one and uh, sorry I'm just repeating myself so anyway <laughs> get to see the human part of me right we all get fried in time time so Tomorrow we're going to work on um, uh, Project 2, which is Margin Padding 2. I didn't get to that. I guess I started and I stopped because it, it was uh, in, I was just fighting myself on that. So we're going to finish that up, and then we'll do. I'll finish up the knowledge checks, and that will round this off, um, round off the CSS foundations, and then we're going to go into Flexbox. So that that'll be fun. So. Um, getting progressively more difficult as we go along here, um, but I'm glad you're along for the journey. Please like, share, and subscribe if you would please, and until next time, see ya.